right, welcome back, mathletes. Uh, we're here we are at four or five. We're going to talk about how to set up a matrix equation and use inverses to solve the system of linear equations. Now, we found a way uh, in 4.4 four using Kramer's rule. We also looked at some other algebraic ways like the elimination and the substitution method. So here's yet another way of finding it. And it's using matrix, matrix uh, equations and using the idea of what an inverse is. Now, remember when you do an inverse, it's like multiply an inverse, like if you multiply by five, you multiply by its reciprocal. Well, matrices don't have uh, reciprocals. And uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find two matrices that when you multiply together, you get kind of uh, the identity matrix, as we call it. It's where ones go down uh, the main diagonal, as we call it, and there are zeros everywhere else. That's the equivalent of one. Uh, multiplying that matrix times, in this case, another three by three uh, will always give you the same matrix. That's the identity matrix, as we call it. Okay, now if it's two by two, you would just have the one, zero, zero, one, obviously, is what you'd have. So one's down the main diagonal, zero's everywhere else. So now again, we, we try to do this, uh, determine if the two matrices are inverses. Well, if we multiply those together, uh, A times B, and it's got to work for both. It's got to go A times B and B times A. If you get the identity matrix for both cases, yeah, they're inverses of one another. And in this case, as you do it on the calculator, you, uh, you, can, you know how to multiply on the calculator, so use that. And in this case, we would say, yes, they are inverses. Okay, let's try these a little, little tougher here with the three by threes. Okay, so um, remember the only inverse they have to be square matrices, two by twos or three by threes. So we take A times B uh, and what we get, yeah, we don't get the identity matrix. There's certainly plenty of ones and zeros, but we gotta have ones down the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. We don't have that. We don't even have to check B times A. Uh, we can conclude right away that these are definitely not matrices. If you wanna check B times A, it doesn't work that way either. Um, but again, that's that's example. So if you're given two matrices to see if they're uh, inverses of one another, multiply them and then make sure you get the identity matrix. That's what you're going to do there. All right. Now, how do you find the inverse of a matrix? Now, here's how you do it formula wise. If you have the two by two matrix A, B, C, D, you take one over the determinant of A. Now, remember, the determinant is where you go A times D minus B times C. OK, so now if the determinant is zero, Obviously, that means that there isn't an inverse because you can't. It's undefined. Um, and then all you do then is multiply that one divided by the determinant if it's not zero. Uh, you switch the A and the D values around, and then you just make the B and C opposite, and that gives you the matrix. But, you know, that's the formula way to do that. But actually, there's a better way using our friend the calculator. And here it is. Find the inverse of that matrix. Uh, let's call our calculator up here. I think I have it stored in there. Uh, so again, we're going to, this one I do have as matrix A, we'll go into the matrix here. Oopsie, I don't want to do that. Let's clear that. All right, let's go second matrix. And let's see, I believe I have that one in there. Okay, edit. And then the inverse key is going to be this one right here. That's the inverse, the X, the negative one. Whoops, I hit that twice. I didn't mean to do that. All right, let's try that again matrix A, and then let's just do our inverse and hit enter. Bada bing, bada boom, there it is right there. Yeah, it's perfect, works out awesome. Okay, all right, keep that calculator handy as we go. Let's try another one. This time we have this one again. I think this one I have stored as matrix B if I'm not mistaken. Let's go back into here. So we'd go second, we'd hit the matrix. Uh, let's see, let's name matrix B. And in this case, let's do the inverse. Just click that button right there. And oh, now something weird happens. It's a lot of times they'll say error, singular matrix. That means no inverse matrix exists, okay? And if we check back the determinant there, four times one fourth is one and we're subtracting one, it's zero. Oh, the determinant was zero. That means that the, matri uh, the inverse does not exist. So when that happens on the calculator, if it says error, typically that means that you can't do it. Okay, so that was a good example there of doing that. Okay, so that's finding matrices. That's good. Our inverses, good. All right, now let's talk about how to solve a matrix, uh, matrix equation. Uh, as we saw before, we all know that 5x equals 20. We would divide by 5. Well, it's the same thing as multiplying by the inverse, right? So 1 fifth, we multiply both sides by 1 fifth. So that's what we're going to be doing. So in a matrix equation, we're going to have a matrix A times the variable matrix, and that's it's going to be X, Y, and that's going to be our solution. And so what we can do is use the inverses to solve that. So here's how it works. 
If you take a look over here and you notice that we have the coefficients, so make sure it's written in standard form. Make sure it's x, y equals a number, x, y equals a number. Take the coefficient matrix. That's going to be matrix A. So we're going to use 1, 1, 2, and 1. Then we have our variable matrix. That's always going to be a 2 by 1. That's going to equal our solution matrix, 8, 1. Okay, so that's how you take that from a system of linear equations. You put it into a matrix equation. All right, now that we have that, again, we can't divide by matrix A, but what we do is we, we multiply by the inverse is how we're going to solve that. And I'll walk through how to do that. So basically, um, again, you have to do it on the left side. So, you know, when you take A inverse times A, that gives you the identity matrix. So that just tells you that to find X, just take the inverse of A times B is what we're going to do. All right, so here we go. So let's write the system. Uh, let's put the matrix equation. Let's see. Let's just check x, y equals a number, x, y equals a number. There it is. All right, so our matrix equation is going to look like this. We're going to go 2, 5, 5, and then don't forget the negative 3. All right, there we go. Sorry about the penmanship here. Our variable matrix always is x, y, and that's going to equal 0 and 31. All right, so this is matrix A, this is matrix B, so to find matrix X, which is our variable matrix, we're going to take the inverse of A times B, and time to go to the calculator again. Saved us a little time here because I have stored these in. Uh, let's clear that out of there. Uh, second matrix, let's go down here. I think I have it as E. I believe so. Okay, enter, matrix A, E, let's go inverse, times, and then we would go matrix, uh, let's go to F is what we have there for that one. All right, there it is, right there, bada bing, bada bing. look at that, gives us the solution, 5, negative 2, so X is 5, Y is negative 2, it's kind of a slick way, that's the point where it intersects, yeah, that, it's just that easy, guys, awesome. Yeah, setting up that matrix equation, really slick. A little easier than Kramer's rule, don't you think? I would agree. I would definitely agree. All right, let's set this one up again using the matrix equation. Let's get that set up first. All right, so here we go. We're going to go 1, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, remember that's matrix A. Then we have our variable matrix X, where it's just going to be X, Y. Let's get that Y better. There we go. And that's going to equal our solution matrix 4. 9. Pretty simple assignment. So find the point at which we intersect. Okay, we're going to get that over here. Let's see, let's go over here. So that's going to be second matrix. Let's go down to, that's going to be matrix C. That's what I've stored that as. And remember, we got to do the inverse of that one. And then we're going to go times matrix D. I've already stored these in here to save us some time on the presentation. A good idea and we hit enter and look at that there's your point of intersection it's 3 1 the nice thing is you can check it 3 plus 1 is 4 and 6 plus 3 is 9 you know that it's right it's awesome it works out really nice so another way to find the system the solution to the system of linear equations in other words finding the point where it crosses is to set up a matrix equation and then use the idea of inverses take the inverse of a times b gets you your solution every single time so again, nice, uh, nice tools that we have here. Another way of solving. Hope you enjoy 4.5. We'll be back tomorrow with 4.6 to show you yet another way you can solve these equations. So the more tools in the toolbox, as we say. All right. Well, I hope